We are often confronted with situations where we have to choose between an outcome or action in the present and one in the future. Such situations are always tricky, as seen in the Adam Sandler starter crime thriller Uncut Gems. Howard Ratner is a once successful New York gems dealer whose gambling addiction has left his family and career in shambles and him deep in debt. He struggles to pay off the $100,000 he owes to his loan shark brother-in-law Arno in spite of being able to afford buying and maintaining an apartment for his mistress and spending thousands of dollars to procure a rare uncut black opal from Ethiopia. Arno becomes increasingly impatient with Howard's inability to repay him and his tactics to recover the money become increasingly aggressive. Regardless, every time Howard finds himself in a position of being able to repay Arno's debt, he chooses to place another bet with the money instead, hoping to win big and repay the debts in the future. Howard's perpetual procrastination in favor of the immediate gratification of betting can be attributed partly to what psychologists refer to as the present bias. In this video, we take a look at the definitions and history of present bias, followed by its causes, then its risks and benefits, and finally ways to manage it. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel to watch other videos on similar biases. Now let's get started. Present bias is defined as the tendency to want things now rather than later, as the desired result in the future is perceived somewhat less valuable than one in the present. This tendency has been known through the ages. For instance, the ancient Chinese philosopher Confucius noted, Cunning words confound the mind, petty impatience confounds great projects. Economists have traditionally represented this tendency in terms of discounting. For example, we may prefer $100 today over $200 in a year. In this case, we are discounting the delayed reward of $200 at 50% annually by valuing it as much as $100 today. The most widely accepted model of time discounting, known as hyperbolic discounting, was proposed by the American psychologist George Ainsley in the 1970s. This model was able to explain a critical experimental observation known as the preference reversal which can be seen in the following experiment. Participants are given a choice to receive $100 immediately or $120 in a month. In this case, most people are likely to pick the sooner payoff of $100 and not wait an additional month for $20. But now consider a choice to receive $100 in 12 months or $120 in 13 months. Pause and consider which option you'll pick in this case. As we see with most participants, your preference is likely to switch to the larger later reward of $120 in this case, even though you still need to wait an additional month for $20. Hyperbolic discounting explains preference reversal by proposing that impatience decreases as the delay to the sooner payoff increases. In the next section, we look at the causes of the present bias. Causes of a behavioral bias may be either cognitive or neural. Let's start with the cognitive causes, which are the psychological mechanisms which explain the bias. Now, it is likely that no one of the multiple cognitive causes can explain all the instances of the bias and that each cause is valid in some cases while being invalid in others. Our perception of time is not perfect and has many errors. To observe errors in your own time perception, start a timer, don't look at it and stop it when you think a minute has passed. Now you can compare a minute in your mental time to actual time. It is likely that your estimation of one minute is off the one minute mark on the timer. Now, as time intervals get longer, such as a month or a year, our estimation of time becomes more erroneous. Such errors in time perception may lead to phenomena such as preference reversal, which we discussed in the experiment. Temporal construal theory proposes that options can be described in terms of their core or peripheral features. For example, 
While buying a car, the core features might include mileage or comfort for a daily use car or ruggedness and durability for an SUV. While the peripheral features might be the numerous aesthetic and entertainment features of the car. People are more focused on core features when deciding for distant future. While they may be swayed by peripheral features when deciding for the present or immediate future. According to researchers, how long one has to wait to receive the payoff may be a secondary peripheral feature, while the actual magnitude of the payoff itself may be a core feature. Therefore, duration of delay only matters in the short term and for longer durations and larger rewards, people are more patient, which explains preference reversal. Some researchers suggest that preference reversal can be explained in terms of the visceral drives associated with certain goods and experiences. For example, when we are hungry, we are impulsive for food and when we are caffeine deprived, we crave coffee and so on. These visceral drive states lead to impulsiveness and impatience. In cases that do not involve emotion or appetite, such as monetary payoffs, the visceral drive states may be either due to curiosity, habit or self-initiated through rationalizations of their need and value. Now let's look at the neural causes which are the brain functions and other biological functions that contribute to the bias. How much we value a reward is determined in the ventral striatum, the medial prefrontal cortex and the posterior cingulate cortex. The activity in these brain regions increases as the amount of reward increases and decreases as the delay to the reward increases. So we are hardwired to undervalue delayed rewards. But this hardwiring can be overridden in favor of delayed rewards by brain regions associated with cognitive control and planned action, such as dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and parietal cortex. During adolescence, impulsiveness starts to decline with age, and this decline is associated with change in activation patterns in ventromedial prefrontal cortex, a brain region involved in decision-making and emotional regulation. In the next section, let's move on to some of the risks and benefits of the bias. Let's start with the benefits. After all, for the bias to be passed down to us from our ancestors either genetically or culturally, it must be beneficial at least in certain conditions. Only consequences in the present or immediate future can be totally certain, whereas future consequences are uncertain by their very nature. For instance, an expected reward in the future due to unforeseen circumstances may never materialize or materialize later than expected or smaller than expected. For these reasons, rewards in future are considered risky and undervalued compared to immediate rewards. Now, this would have been especially true in early hunter-gatherer societies where rewards like food had to be acquired regularly and consumed immediately otherwise they could become unconsumable or be stolen. Now let's turn our attention towards the risks or undesirable impacts of the bias on individuals and society as a collective. Awareness of one's own present bias can actually lead to worse decisions. For example, if you know that you're going to finish that cake in the fridge sooner or later, then you may reason that you may as well finish it now rather than wait. Everyone suffers from procrastination wherein we choose instant gratification by pushing a stressful or effortful task to the future. Now this behavior is a direct result of impatience and impulsiveness. Researchers have found that drug-dependent individuals and gamblers are more impatient than average individuals, suggesting that extreme present bias and need for immediate gratification are fundamental causes of addictive behaviors. Present bias is also responsible for people not saving enough. As needs and desires of the present loom larger compared to potential needs and contingencies in the future. Our response to problems with delayed negative consequences also suffers due to present bias. For example, we may overconsume our resources and exhaust them like fossil fuels, or we may overconsume food and face health problems like obesity. The global response to climate change is another example of delayed negative consequences being overlooked in the present. And in the final segment, let's look at some of the ways we can manage our own present bias in cases where negative impacts are likely.
Firstly, a delayed reward can be made more attractive by framing it to be emotionally salient and evocative and by providing a richer context to make the reward feel certain and tangible. Also, attention should be drawn to the negative aspects or costs of the immediate reward. For example, to beat procrastination, the positive experiences associated with completing the task like pride, satisfaction and relief must be highlighted along with the negative aspects of the immediately gratifying alternative. Next, we can make future easier to imagine by building empathy with the future self and drawing attention away from the delay. For example, to save for retirement, try to visualize life after retirement and anticipate the problems you may face then while not thinking about all the time you have left till retirement. Self-control is the key to counter impatience and impulsiveness and it improves with repetition. That is situations where people have to repeatedly make similar present versus future decisions. By repetition, people may firstly learn the patterns of their own present bias from previous cases and secondly perceive a current choice as a test case or an example that predicts their own future behavior and thus inclines them towards practicing more self-control. For example, imagine a person who wants to quit smoking and is visited by a time traveler who informs him that next day onwards he will quit smoking for the rest of his life. Now this person just got an excuse to smoke as much as he likes that day because he's sure that next day onwards he will quit smoking forever. On the other hand, if the time traveler informs the man that he'll never be able to quit smoking, then he'll give up hope and again continue to smoke as much as he likes. Only if future smoking is in doubt, does self-control in the present seem worth the effort because the person sees current smoking choice as test case for future smoking choices. Pre-commitment is the act of taking steps in the present to limit our own options in the future as we anticipate bad decisions in the future due to impulsiveness and impatience. An example of this are fixed deposits in banks which cannot be withdrawn until a certain duration has passed. The Nobel laureate behavioral economist Richard Taylor explains this in terms of two selves. A doer who acts in present and is impulsive and a planner who plans for future and is self-aware. Now the planner is aware of the impulsiveness of the doer and plans to avoid bad decisions that the doer might make in the future. And to conclude, let's look back at the example of Howard Ratner. Howard loved the thrill of a high stakes gamble and every time he had any money available, he used it to seek that thrill. This instant gratification was much preferable to him than the rewards of paying off his debts, like avoiding trouble in the future. Howard seemed aloof to this pattern of behavior and only if he could see each of his decisions as a test case for future behavior, he might exercise more self-control and come around to paying his dues. Go watch the movie to find out the story of Howard Ratner's addiction. And now it's your turn. Tell us in the comments below how present bias has influenced your behaviors and decisions. And you better do it now. Don't procrastinate. See you next time.